So that was Kumoi Jishi. So now we're going to do something a little different, and I'm going to play you a piece from the Mayan style of shakuhachi playing, which is associated with uh, uh, Zen and breathing and meditation uh, in some sort. Uh. So uh, this next piece on the program, Kyushu Debo, is uh, uh, a piece that's from southern Japan, and according to my notes. Uh, in traditional shakuhachi music, there are a number of different pieces with the title Debo, which translates to yearning for the bell. This is a reference to the handbell of the legendary Chinese Zen master, Fuke, who rang this bell in the 9th century when collecting alms. On the southern island Kyushu, there existed several Komuso temples, and this one uh, is said to come from Ichoken Temple in Kyushu. So this is Kyushu Debo.
now for a quick instrument change. So this next piece on the program is one of two movements from Elizabeth Brown's Shakochi solos from Isle Royal, which was written in 2005 while she was an artist in residence in Isle, Roy Isle Royal National Park, a US biosphere reserve in the middle of Lake Superior. And the two movements are modeled on traditional Kinkoryu style Shakochi playing gestures and is inspired by um, that, or I'm going with. The, I'm going off script. I apologize, but to quote uh, Elizabeth, um, in Isle Royal, we would frequently have heard loons all night long, and it would be this incredible quiet. It's a quiet you don't get in New York with loons calling, and it's just the loneliest and most beautiful sound you can imagine. Um, later in this article uh, that I'm quoting, she says, um, "Loons started as a solo, but then." Loons are in pairs and they nest for life, so you will frequently hear them calling back and forth. Um, and so you'll hear some of that in this piece. Um, the Shakuachi solos from Isle Royal are dedicated to Ralph Samuelson. And uh, I, yeah, I will, I will try to keep the off script part brief, um, but Isle, solos from Isle Royal is. Um, one of the first uh, piece, contemporary pieces of shakuhachi music that I ever learned studying with Elizabeth. Um, and for those of you joining us who um, know anything about my history as a shakuhachi player of nine months without making a sound on the first get-go, um, it's, it's a real uh, privilege for me to be able to play some of Elizabeth's music with you tonight. Um, I think it's some of the most interesting music, uh, contemporary music for Shakuhachi in that it both um, is borrowing from the tradition but also um, really doing some really cool and neat stuff that I hope uh, I can share with you tonight. So this is Loons from solos, uh, Shakuhachi solos from Isle Royal.
Thank you. So the last solo piece on this program is Nancy Beckman's Six Minute Meditation, which was composed uh, for the 2012 World Shakuachi Festival that took place in Kyoto that year. Uh, Nancy writes, I was looking out my window at the new leaves coming in on the maple trees, and I noticed how the wind at various heights moved the leaves. The larger leaves higher up had bigger movements, and the smaller, newer leaves on the ends of the branches had gentle and delicate movements, end quote. So each pitch and gesture corresponds to the different kinds of movements that she saw. Um, there are also moments where um, you'll notice these long spans of what might appear to be silences, but um, I would uh, like to invite you to um, kind of try and space out with me, as it were, um, during these moments. Um, I found this piece to be uh, very uh, grounding in the past couple of months as we've gotten used to our COVID lives and you have these moments where you can take a second to look around you and really take it all in, so to speak. So I'd like to invite you to enjoy the space and Nancy Beckman's six minute meditation. Thank you.
was six minute meditation. We have a quick search change coming. I would now like to introduce the super awesome uh, Kanoko Kamata, who's going to play shamisen for the next piece on the program called Yugao. Uh, Kanoko Kamata is a second year PhD student in the sociology department here at Pitt and is studying about social movements, especially how people are discouraged uh, and or encouraged to participate in social movements. Her late grandmother was a singer and a shamisen player the Minyo style, or Japanese folk songs. She started, uh, Kanoko started her shamisen training in Tokyo uh, as an ikutaryu player, as a koto, uh, Kyoto style of playing. She's now uh, studying shamisen with uh, Sumie Kane Kaneko, who is a Yamada Ryu player. Um, so the piece that we're going to play for you tonight, uh, Yugao, is uh, a piece from the Jyuta repertory, which is pieces of, uh, that were originally written for shamisen. And then later on, a uh, koto part might have been added, and then a shakuachi part would have been added. And it gives you uh, something called the Sankyoku Ensemble, which is an ensemble of three parts or three different players. Um, you don't need all three players to play this music, thankfully. Um, though it is a different, it's a different experience. Um, and all of them are equally fascinating and interesting. Um, so the song text for Yugao is based off of the story of uh, Yugao, translates to evening faces, uh, from the uh, tale of Genji, or uh, Genji Monogatari. And uh, Genji, a lad of 17, is on the way to visit his old foster mother. He stops to admire a fence clustered with evening glories. A young girl appears, and on behalf of her mistress, Yugao, presents some of the flowers to Genji on a, perfu on a perfumed fan. Entranced by the simple beauty of the girl, he resolves to see her again. He takes her with him one night to a secluded mansion, but after a, grief, uh, after a brief interlude of love, Genji's previous lady, Lokujo, sends her jealous spirit to kill Yugo, and Yugo, Yugo dies in his arms. So, please enjoy Yugo. tuning.
Don't touch that dial just yet. The program lied. There's one more piece. We'll be back in just a sec. Samisen Kanoko also plays uh, taiko drums. Um, and so, while Yugao is a lovely piece, it's also, well, we wanted to end on something a little bit more upbeat today. Um, so, before we go, Kanoko and I will play one short little encore for you called Hokkai Bon Uta, uh, which <coughs> is a song that's typically sung during the Bon Odori, a traditional, dance fe a traditional festival that takes place in Japan to, to celebrate. Ancestors every summer. And this Bon Odori piece is from the northern island of Hokkaido. It's a minyo piece, or another, it's a folk song. And unlike the other pieces in this program, uh, minyo typically features a call and response while the playing is going on. Um, so we'll have to make do with just the two of us tonight, unfortunately. But th for those of you at home who are familiar with the call and response, uh, please join us. And if uh, you don't, please dance. Uh, to your heart's content. Um, and r just one last thing before we play, um, I have to extend a really, really big thank you to the music department for hosting us, uh, to Phil, hel to helping coordinate, and Sean for running sound, Pittsburgh Taiko for letting us use the, their two daiko. Uh, shime daiko. Uh, shime daiko, I'm sorry. And to, and an especially a big thank you to all of you who've joined us from home. So. Thank you so much, and without further ado, Hokkai Bon Uta.
Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>